Welcome back everyone. Today I'm here in my basement. I need a lot of space. I'm going to be working on my baker's tent or a campfire tent. I told you all about that in one of my videos. We got to get to it. There's a lot of work to be done and the snow's already flying and I want to get hot tenting as soon as possible. Let's get started. Well, let's take a look at the fabric. I'll take you back a little while ago when I purchased the fabric and uh, we'll show you a little bit of a model of what I'm going to be making. Let's rewind to August where I visited JT's outdoor fabric store in Barrie. Take a look in here. There is everything you need and more for your outdoor projects. Fabric, notions, buckles, webbing, thread. Wow, there is so much content in this store. So much inventory, I couldn't believe it. So I placed an order and it was delivered right to my door. As you know, I love this book. I made my anorak and muck looks in it. Um, this is where the pattern for the baker's tent, the Bill Mason tent is going to come from. Bill Mason, a very famous uh, Canadian canoeist. So um, Garrett and Alexander Conover put a pattern for the baker's tent in here. Let's take a look at it. So right here, another name for it is also called the campfire tent. And uh, this is the pattern that I'll be using. And uh, there you go. I'll sort of do a little quick zoom it there. So those are the pieces that we'll need. Seems fairly straightforward, although it is quite an intimidating project. Uh, lots of sewing, heavy fabric. Um, oh, there's my muckluck pattern. So lots of sewing, heavy fabric, um, but you know, we'll get it done. I had to get started on making a model for this because it's a bit intimidating with all that fabric. How's this all going to go together? Here's the finished model, the 1 12th scale. I've been working on it for quite some time, tweaking it a little bit, making a lot of mistakes. Show you all the way around here on this side as well. So I've marked off where every grommet, every tab, every bit of webbing has to go. That's one thing that this model really helped me with was to determine where all those things go. Um, this is the front door. It's going to be um, it's two pieces of fabric actually, It'll be held together by snaps on the main main structure. But you can see that the uh, it's two flaps are going to be held together with ties. And we look inside, if we look inside there, I haven't put the no seam netting wall in there just for, you know, make it nice and clear for you. This is the fly. So, I mean, this is a boring piece of the, of the pattern, but this is a fly that goes over the top, obviously, and that's going to be suspended by ropes. So that's okay. Uh, again, there's other configurations here, some grommet tabs, so I can cinch it back down. Um, if there's like a heavy storm or if I don't want to pick it up, like, I don't know, lots of different things to, to do. Well, there's the fabric all rolled up. Um, what do we have? Well, we have, this is the um, 10 ounce canvas and that one is treated with fire retardant for some parts of the tent. Uh, this stuff in the roll here, this is the 10 ounce canvas uh, non-fire uh, retardant. Uh, it's extremely expensive for this one, so I can only get a bit of it to put sort of where I'll be putting the little stove to heat the tent. Um, the Sort of this colored uh, fabric here, that's actually fiberglass fabric. That's going to be used for the sleeve for where my stovepipe comes through the tent. So yeah, they have all kinds of fabrics, JT's outdoor fabrics, um, notions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, if you're interested, they're in Barry. Uh, they do ship, I'm assuming, um, North America wide, but uh, you'll have to look into that. If you're interested, they also have a fabulous website. Just Google it if you're looking for textiles for outdoor projects. So there we go. A little bit of an intimidating project. Let's go downstairs and I'm going to show you where the magic's going to happen. Before we get started, there's a really important stitch I need to show you. It's a full flat felled seam. It's waterproof. Uh, it uses a lot of fabric, but boy, does it really hold two pieces of fabric together really well. And it provides a waterproof seal. To do the... Um, flat full felt seam, what we need to do is just a little demonstration here to show you what I'll be using to join two very large pieces of fabric. So what we do is, um, there's one piece, there's the other piece. What you do is you wanna measure down uh, for this seam about a half an inch from the top of one piece of your fabric. This is just some marker I use for fabric. So half an inch and then I just sort of like draw it all the way across. And then um, what we're going to do is put the second piece of fabric down just on that line. I'm going to take this waterproof hem tape, 
tear a piece off here. And it just takes a little bit of effort to peel that off. So it's kind of like glue, but it actually is extra waterproofing for this seam. And just make sure it's all lined up and we fold it over like that. And that's gonna really help hang on to this. It's gonna replace the need for pins. I highly advise that you press this uh, with the iron on hot. Obviously don't burn the fabric, but uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but especially if you're working with a large piece of fabric, really handy to really set that glue into the fabric um, with the iron. Next, what we're gonna do is fold it over like so, and you'll see there's part of the seam there. And now what we'll do is go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you we're gonna sew this side first, uh, about an eighth of an inch in, and then we're gonna flip it over once that's sewn, and you're gonna sew an eighth of an inch in on this side. Just show you what the fabric's looking like on end there. You can see how it's all folded over. It's an awesome waterproof seam. We've got it on the machine now. I'm just gonna run it through. On the other side. Again, about an eighth of an inch in. And it's all done. That's what it looks like. It is a really sturdy seam. It's watertight. It does use a fair bit of fabric, but it looks beautiful. So we'll use this as one of our main stitches to make larger pieces of fabric. Another hem that I like to do for this project is just your basic hem, not using any French seams or anything fancy like that. So I just fold it over about a quarter of an inch and keep going. That wasn't done too well, but you get the idea. So the first step is to get all the fabric, you know, unfurled and have a really good working space. Thankfully, I've got the basement here. I can unfurl this fabric. And um, the pieces, as you'll see, are actually a bit wider than the fabric that I purchased. So right here unfurled is the fire retardant canvas, and that is the non-fire retardant canvas. So my first steps are going to be to, you know, sew two panels together of each of these fabrics. So I'm going to, you know, make a very wide piece of fabric to work with. I cannot stop cutting out the parts right now for the tent because this fabric is just not wide enough for the pieces that I have. So what I'll do then is I'm going to sew them together. We're going to use a full flat felled seam to do that. It's a really waterproof seam. Here's the pattern of all the pieces laid out and labeled. So this is really helpful. So just to help you out, this is the non-fire retardant fabric. I have to sew two widths of these together to make one piece so that I can fit the fly roof, you know, all basically the sidewall and wing has to fit on here. This is be the front door panel. So that's the left door panel. Uh, the right door panel I can probably fit on uh, a regular width right here. So, uh, yep. So this is going to be my pattern. Of course, I have my... 3D model to go off of. It's a little bit collapsed right now, but all the measurements are on there so I can see in 3D what it looks like. So I've got my machine all ready to go. This thread right here is by Coates and Clark. It is their 100% polyester outdoor uh, UV resistant thread. So I got lots of those. I'll just show you that's what the bottom of it looks like if you're looking for the UPC code on it to find out what the product is comes like that. Lined up beside my sewing machine here are um, pre-wound bobbins. So I've got four ready to go and one in the unit itself. That way, you know, as the bobbin runs out, I'm not going to interrupt my flow by creating, uh, you know, making more um, threaded bobbins. So they're just ready to roll when I run out of thread. Right here I have my working space. So I've got my ironing board to iron these seams and I've got uh, some waterproof seam tape right there and my model Got to have a good working space, really wide working space for this project as the fabric is absolutely huge. Well, first off, let's start off on something that's fairly straightforward. We're going to be working on the front door flaps. This design uh, involves two pieces of canvas that overlap and can be clipped or tied together. So I think this is a good place to start, good place to practice those seams and uh, 
hopefully I won't make any mistakes. I'm going to be doing my full flat felled seam. So I'm using this tape right here. This is uh, basting tape and it's waterproof. Well, we make the seam waterproof. So basically I measure down about a half inch from the edge and you end up just peeling this off and you'll get kind of a two-way tape. Just like I showed you earlier when we did the full flat felled seam. Only now we've got a lot of fabric to do it on. So I've turned the sewing machine sideways so I can use the table and this is where things get really annoying. So you can see I've flopped over the fabric there. I'm going to sew in about an eighth of an inch on this side then we'll flip it over and do the same on the other side but oh man this is where the problem begins. Tons of fabric and it's a rather stiff fabric as well. I can get it through the sewing machine but sometimes I'll need a helper to kind of hold on the other end to kind of pull it through properly. Let's get sewing. So I'll just show you, I've ran it through the machine. This is the step one. Uh, this is gonna be a really nice seam, you know, nice and waterproof. So we gotta flip it over and do this on the other side and then it will be complete. It's a lot of fabric to work with, guys. It takes a lot of time to do this seam. So uh, <laughs> budget your time accordingly. And there we go, the double flat felled seam. It's not perfect, but it works. So there you go. It is a waterproof seam. If you flip over on the other side, there you go. That's what it looks like. It's a lot of work, but really worth it in the end. This will be the middle of the large fabric piece here, and I'm going to cut the other door panel out of here, and this will be in the middle just to make it nice and even. Now I have a double wide piece of fabric for the front door with my full flat felled seam in the middle so it's waterproof. As I mentioned earlier, this will be, when I do the other part of the front door, this seam right here will be in the middle just so that it's a little bit nicer and I will cut out the other piece of the front door all kind of around here and we'll have some extra fabric of the fire retardant fabric if we need it. So we'll measure that out and cut it out and we'll have the door basically done. Well, the front doors are done now. I'm going to be doing the webbing and the clips and any snap work a little bit later. I'm still waiting on my order from JT Outdoor Fabrics for that. Next, let's get on to the fly. That's the second least complicated piece, although it is a bit challenging because it's a lot of fabric to work with. So let's get on to that part next. It's uh, 11 feet 6 inches by 9 feet wide. So I'm going to work on that piece. I'm going to have to sew together two of the non-fire retardant um, pieces of canvas fabric so we'll do that in the middle is going to be the full felled seam so it'll be waterproof as well here's the big roll of canvas this is where things get really interesting so I'm going to roll this out and it's going to be obviously double wide it's going to be a lot of fabric to put through the machine just going to roll this out the rest of the way so I don't have to measure again for that 11 foot Six roll. I've added an extra inch actually to 11.7 just for my seams. Perfect. Now I can just cut it and I'll have two lengths. So here is the 11 by 7 foot double wide fabric. I'm just working on the full flat felt seam. And my advice to you is when you're working on this seam, every step of the way, I would recommend ironing it just so that you get those nice crisp seams. Um, so when I did the first two steps and I did the basting, the glue there, I ironed it just to kind of melt the glue into the fabric so that it really grabs. And I'm just going to iron this part here before I do my first row of the seam just because it's going to kind of come unfurled once you start bunching this kind of fabric through the sewing machine. I have my iron, my little Black & Decker here at the hottest setting, but don't have it on steam or anything. And I'm just gonna press the seam flat so that when it goes through the machine, it's gonna go through nice and smoothly. And also grab a bit more of that tape there, that glue. So just make your life a whole lot easier. And it's all done. So there's the double wide, uh, this is for the fly. So now I just have to cut out the width. The length pretty much stays the same because I'll be doing um, seams all the way around each side with some webbing to put the grommets in. 
So there's our seam, waterproof, which is perfect for the roof. Fly, I should say. I'm just gonna cut that out and then this piece is done for the day. So here's the big panel, 11 foot by seven inches and nine foot by one inch, just so I have enough to do the hem margins there. And I'm gonna put some webbing all the way around because the grommets will have to be here for the fly to make it uh, nice and stable so we can like basically tie it to trees and protect the tent. So the fly is almost done. I'm gonna do the webbing, all that later. Right now I'm just focusing on getting all these panels done. That's the biggest part of this job. On to the next one. It's a relief to have those pieces done, but I must say I'm a little bit nervous about this next part. So next I'm gonna be working on the main body of the tent. So the canopy, um, the roof over the tent, and the back of the tent and the sod cloth underneath. That's one continuous piece. It's a huge piece, a little, basically around 13 feet by seven feet. So it's a huge piece of fabric and uh, there's some pretty intricate details that we have to work out. So let's do it. Well, there's the big piece there. This is basically the majority of the tent right there. That's the roof, the canopy, and sort of the back of the tent, the sidewalls are gonna to attach to. I didn't show you guys the sewing process to bring these two pieces of fabric together. It was pretty intense. Uh, so I just wanna show you that it is basically put together with the special seams we talked about earlier. Let's cut out the piece. Let me show you what it looks like again. So from my model, you can see this is what it's going to look like. So I've got to cut this out of the big piece I just showed you. Of course, the seam's going to go right down the middle. The sod cloth grows on the ground. I've got the two no seam uh, windows at the back, which I'll cut in a bit later. There's a back wall. I'm actually going to put about a one inch piece that hangs out of here with grommets in it to kind of tighten it up. When you put it together, it looks like that. So you can see how the windows and the roof and then the canopy. So I need some grommets here on this ridge to you know, like tie it and secure it in the forest. So I'll put a little one inch piece there. I've actually accounted for that in that piece of fabric. There's a ridge line where I'll have some grommets in there so that I can put a pole across the top with a bit of you know, rope or something. And this is gonna be the canopy in the front and it'll be flaps on the side to put the uh, little snaps on to hold the, the front doors right here. that will snap onto there and the sidewall wings are going to snap on right here so it's your four inch pieces there'll be a little bit of a gap there so i can fold this down okay so i don't make any mistakes but i will cut this out next through the magic of television it is all cut out this is the full tent if we walk up here you can see this is the canopy with little corners cut out this would sort of be the roof of the tent as we go back, we'll get the back wall and the sod cloth. So it looks like that. So it turned out okay. I have not cut out the windows yet, by the way. I wanna kind of save that probably for last, decide what I wanna do exactly there. So I would like to finish up this panel completely before I do the side wings. To refresh your memory on the side wings, uh, that's what it looks like. And that's also the side of the tent right there. So that is going to have to be an exact match up to the last piece that I had. So let's finish up the main body of the tent first. This one can actually, if there's any errors or anything, we can make up for it with the side wings and the side of the tent. So what do I mean by finishing up that panel? Well, I'm going to put some webbing in uh, for reinforcements where I do the grommets. Instead of doing these little, you know, fabric reinforcements, you know, making my own, I'm just going to sew the seam and I'm going to sew this into the seam. So we're going to do that in areas where I need to put snaps and where I need to put grommets. So we're going to do all the seam work for the main piece that you just saw. And we're going to put in the, uh, yeah, this webbing to support these things that will, um, they'll need a lot of support. You want them to rip out. So this is one inch nylon webbing. I didn't get the polypropylene that would be nice too. This nylon is good. It's UV resistant and it's really strong and you can easily punch through it with these grommets or the snaps. How we're going to do the seams with the webbing is I'm going to fold the parts of the fabric over that, you know, need a nice clean edge about, you know, got a half inch seam allowance on either side. So we're going to do that, iron it down so it stays steady. And then the webbing is going to go over, the webbing is going to go over 
that part right there so you don't see it and doesn't unfurl. And then I'm gonna sew it on just like that. And then the grommets will go through the webbing and it'll be a very, very secure attachment for them. This is instead of doing little triangles of fabric that take a lot of time. Here's the part that's already gone through the machine and you can see that's what it's gonna look like. So nice and clean on the top. That's sort of what you'll see from the outside and the inside, you can see this. Again, this is the nylon webbing. And then through here, the grommets are gonna go, you know, equally spaced wherever they need to go or the snaps for that matter. I'm gonna sew another line right here to sort of seal it up so you can see that's not gonna unfurl on me. So this is what we're gonna be doing to put on the webbing where it needs to go on. This is what I mean by just tacking it down right here. So it looks really nice. And on that side, it looks nice and finished. In a little while, I'll show you how we put the grommets in the webbing. And if you get to a corner, for example, I basically just sew the uh, second line of webbing over top of the other. So it looks pretty good. And of course, a grommet will go right there at the corner. This is part of the fly as an example. So a grommet's gonna go right in there. So it'll be nice and secure in that corner, really reinforced. Now that the webbing is installed, I'm installing some grommets along here. Now, unfortunately, I got this kit by Prim and to install the grommets, this is actually supposed to be a cutting tool installed in this, this A and B. Well, I guess I got the one on sale that has no cutting tool. What a pain. So now I'm kind of hand cutting them out, kind of um, using this tool just to kind of so like this fabric is so thick there's no way even with this current setup it even go through so what i'm doing is kind of putting it like that do a quick tap with the hammer and you can kind of see the outline there and i've been using this fiskars scalpel blade just to kind of cut that out and then i'll use the tool um you know to install the grommet it kind of goes once you get the hole cut out this goes underneath this goes on top once there's a hole there and you hammer it and the grommet is installed just taking me an extra long time because this kit doesn't come with the proper die to cut the hole. What a pain. Anyway, apparently the smaller grommet kits do have it, like the Prim, this is a Prim uh, kit. So the Prim 11 millimeter has one. This is the Prim 14 and there's no tool to cut it. Uh, what a pain. Oh well, I'll just keep working. There, so it took me just like a minute to put that in. Would have taken a few seconds with the proper tool, but uh, this goes on top. And then we have the tool, and I'm just going to strike it with the hammer. Perfect. All done. Looks good. That's going to be really strong. As you can see, there's the, you know, the webbing right in there. So that's not uh, going anywhere. I really like this idea using the webbing. Here is the completed fly. So that feels good to get that done getting all those grommets in and working on the webbing. So this is done. I'm going to fold it all up. Here's a quick peek at where we are with the canvas baker's tent. So you can see here, I've got the fly all done and I've got the two doors. That's one side of the door, the other side of the door and the main body of the tent is on the ground. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, and then of course I'll use the you know, buckles and stuff to kind of put the doors on and snaps to put the doors on. Got to do the wings as well. Oh, we're getting there guys. We're getting there. Right here, as you can see, there's the ridge line, and I want to put grommet tabs in there so you can put shock cord loops or, you know, some other kind of rope through there so you can, you know, bring the tent into its shape. What I'm going to use for that are these grommet tabs. So this is plastic, and this is basically made so that you can sew it into a seam. You can sew through this thin plastic. So I've got five of these to sew in for the ridge line. That way I can put shock cord around and then sort of put my either aluminum pole or you know, wooden pole through that to bring up the ridge line. So I'm pretty excited about these. I've never used these before. I don't know if you have, but apparently this is there. So you don't need to put webbing in. This is strong enough uh, to incorporate into the seam. Working on the ridge line for the tent now where the shock cord will loop through these sew-in grommets. So what I'm doing is uh, using my iron to kind of fold in just a fold here at the top. So it's about a half inch on either side. I'm going to be putting in these uh, sew-in grommets. So uh, this one, this tab here is about three quarter inch. So what I've done is I've just gone through and you know cut, well I will be cutting all of them down now to about a half inch. So when you slide them in here, 
I will put through the sewing machine, it kind of hides the little tag like that. So this will be on the top um, of the tent and the shock cord or paracord will go through here and hang on to the main frame of the tent. So this, just to clarify things, this is the ridge line right here. It's going to have five of those little tabs sewn in. There's the roof. This is just the, the canopy over the vestibule area. So that'll be really easy just to sew that together now that I've ironed it and those little tabs will go in there. I'll probably use a little bit of the waterproof tape in there just to, you know, put them in the spots that I want them. And just fresh out of the sewing machine, you can see here that I've sewn all along the ridge line and I've got the tabs, the D-rings in place. So I did a double reinforcement here, but uh, the plastic itself is really strong so that the shock cord is going to go through here. My frame will be here. It's going to be incredibly strong to hold that in place. So they're all in. It looks really nice. So I've speedily worked ahead and... Um, Grommets are there and look over here. I've got uh, the side done nicely with a bit of uh, the webbing. So we'll be putting snaps through right here. This is the front canopy. Just a little split there and did a, a quick little zigzag. Um, so it goes all the way like that and around the other side. So there will be um, some grommets go here that the uh, poles will hold up so the canopy can be held up. Now what I'm going to do is just uh, subdivide here the roof from the back wall. And I'll be sewing in a bit of webbing and we'll put some grommets in because that's going to really hold uh, the tent back up. So you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. So I flipped over the tent and I did my measurement there just a little over around five foot eight inches there. And I added an inch on either side of it. Um, so that this part will now be the roof right here. This is going to be the back wall about two feet in here and that's going to be the sod cloth. So I ironed that hard line right there. I'm going to put a little bit of my uh, special tape there to hold down a piece of webbing and you know into that flap that's where the grommets will go to kind of hold the tent up in the back end. I've already pre-cut my webbing as well. So this is going to get sewn in but I'm going to use a bit of that waterproof seam tape just to kind of tack it down and provide a good seal for when I sew it in. Now it is complete, so there we go. Turned out really nicely. As you can see, I've got the grommets installed there all the way along. And what I did is I lined the grommets up with the, the D-rings there at the top where the uh, front canopy meets the roof line there. So they'll be symmetrical. So that's awesome. This one right here took a lot of time to punch through all those layers of fabric. I actually have been hand cutting the holes for the grommets um, just because it's been such a tough go to get through the canvas with a regular uh, way you'd cut a grommet. So that's good to be done. Now I've been humming and hawing about uh, this. The you know the next two feet is the back wall of the tent. I will put those windows in. I think I'll do it now just before I put the side wings on. Uh, I just think it's gonna be a nightmare once I get everything sewn on there to move that fabric on either end as well as trying to sew the little square window. So I'm going to cut out a window, one foot by two foot window, and we're going to sew the noceum fabric on there and put on some Velcro. And that way I'll also be able to put on a storm flap over that so that, you know, if it's winter or if it's stormy outside and don't want the ventilation, I'll close them. So this shouldn't be too bad. Now it's starting to take shape. You can recognize that now as a tent. So the windows are cut out. So over here is some no seam fabric and we've got lots of it. So the no seam fabric will be used for the little um, summer door on it and that would be seven feet wide by four foot four. So there's lots of stuff here. So I'm gonna grab some of that fabric and put it um, in these windows and I'll show you how we'll do that. The easiest way is to just take out the windows that I have cut out so I have an exact replica and maybe add about maybe like a half inch around there because we want to do a nice um, border around these windows. So this would be super easy. You could just sort of trace this, add about a half inch all the way around. I've got the left and the right window to do that. I'll probably put some webbing around there too to make it nice. And then we're going to use some fabric to make a storm flap. There's one of the windows, half of it completed. I've just sewn some webbing onto the noceum. And next, uh, what I'll do is I'll sew this onto the main tent. And on the other side, to sort of disguise this ugly business, uh, I'm going to put some more webbing to kind of finish it up. On the outside, next, after I do that, I'll be putting on some Velcro and making the storm flap. It's nice to see it forming into a tent. The windows are coming along wonderfully with the webbing on either side to hide the seam there. 
It's pretty intense, so I haven't been filming a lot of the window making procedure. Uh, requires all my focus to pop this fabric through the machine, but the result is great. I'll show you in just a moment. All right, so they're done. Next step is to make some storm flaps that will Velcro down over these in case you don't want a draft. For the storm flaps, I've just cut a larger piece of canvas with some webbing for a border, and now I'm going to stick down the 3M Velcro so that I can secure the storm flap to the tent. So here are the back windows, they're all installed. Here's the no -CM, um bug screening and the 3M Velcro. Here's the storm flaps. You can see right here I've got some webbing sewn in. When it's nasty outside, these close up and the flaps, you know, the other part's right there. But if it's a nice day, basically I can kind of roll up the, uh, the storm flap right there. So I'm really happy how these turned out. It was quite a challenging part of the project, actually, these windows, but well worth it in the end. Now we're going to be on to the side walls, and we'll just double check the measurements to make sure it lines up exactly with the rest of the tent. So let's do it. As you recall, for the wings, six foot three at the top and nine feet wide um, for the side part of the tent. And there'll be sod cloth on this part right here. So what I've done is I've taken um, the last bits of fabric, sewn them both together to a double wide, and then cut them in half. Now I'll cut a wing out of each side. So I've got everything traced out here using my little chalk line. That's really handy. I just wanted to show you, I'm actually, I've actually decided to make this separate from that. Because I realized the way I cut the fabric, I'm not going to have enough to make this six foot three. So no big deal. I think it's better actually to do it this way where I, this is removed and it just goes on and attaches to the tent by snaps. Uh, because, you know, it's so much extra weight to carry the wings with me. It's, you know, if it's not going to be really windy or cold, I probably just want to take this part of the tent, you know, in the roof and just the awning. So this is going to be removed. So that's why you see the big line down here. So that's going to be the big panel uh, for the wing. And then over here... You can see this area is the sod cloth. Such a faint tracing, but there's the two foot back wall. And then it's a little bit out of focus, but it goes up there. That's sort of the peak. And then it comes back down. So this is really important to go to your uh, tent and make sure that all the measurements will be exact because you're going to sew this onto the main body of the tent. Over here, I have it crudely stretched out. And you know, you want to measure because that's the part that we're going to be attaching right there and the back wall. So here's definitely two feet. I verified that. This is actually a little bit bigger than the plan. I think it's running at about five foot eight. So I just made that adjustment to my the side wall of the tent there. And I measured, well it bunched up, but actually when I stretched this out, I measured that part uh, for the six foot three inch removable side wings. So that's going to fit uh, really well. So now we're going to cut them out and sew them on. So what I've done next is lined up the edges of uh, the back part of the tent. You can see window right there. I'm just going to do sort of a simple seam here. I didn't really leave enough to do a flat felled seam. Um, it's too bad. But anyways, I'll do that and then I'll just uh, do a little zigzag stitch around the edge there. So let's do it. All right, so I have the side walls sewn on. That's a great accomplishment. And also the detachable wing as well. I'm lining it up right now. I've got it crudely set up at least on the left hand side so that I can line up the sides here to put in the snaps. So we're almost nearing the final stages of the project. So it's good to kind of line them up so that you can put the snaps where you want them. So do five or six all the way to the floor. And then up here, I'm gonna leave this overhang and then there'll be some snaps um, up this way, I think. We'll figure that out when I get there. Just have a sneak peek on the inside. Be a quick little sneak peek on the inside. Like I said, the left side set up. I haven't set up the right side just yet. But you see also I'm using a bit of um, bias tape there to finish up the edges of the sod cloth. I think it looks really nice that way. So it's looking more like a tent. So now I'm going to put in the snaps. Now I have the fabric kind of laid out on the ground and I'm just equally measuring um, out the spots for the snaps. So just measure what you have here in terms of your length of the wing. I marked off about 10 and 5 eighths inches between each one. I'm going to do five snaps, I decided, along the side. So you'll need a snap kit and a dressmaker's all to kind of poke the hole through this fabric side and then coincidentally through the other side as well. And then you'll need that kit to put the snaps in. 
I'm just using these uh, rust resistant brass snaps, six of them in the pack. And I've got some others too for the top. So uh, I've got the tool for these, so no worries. Just taking a look at the snaps, I've got them laid out for each uh, snap. This will be the, um, the under snap here. So we've got this part that'll end up going over that with the fabric in between. And then this is the, the top part of the snap. So you've got that part right there, that part, and this part right here, and the fabric goes in between. And this is the tool set I'll be using to install it. And holes into the fabric, I'm gonna use this all. So for my first one here, I'm just gonna do it a little bit further down to show you guys. I use the awl to make a hole through there and through here is where it's gonna line up. And then we'll um, install the top snap first. Right side of the fabric is down. Just before I hammer it in, you can see the, uh, the snap is on this side and we're gonna put the tool the base plate down there, flip it over. And this little tool goes right in that hole and I'm just gonna hammer on the top to install the first part of the snap. There we go, a couple of gentle taps of the hammer with the tool and it's installed. So I think that looks pretty good. Now I'll install the second part of the snap right here. And that was really quick and easy. So as you can see, the snap's installed right there. There we go, perfect. There's the first one. Now four more to go on this side. And they're all done. Five snaps installed. And uh, just left a little bit at the bottom here, so that's fine. I can always put a little bit of Velcro at the bottom if I need to, but I think it'll be just fine. Next, what's up is doing some snaps just to hold this top part on. I'm thinking of doing it kind of right, right here, so there's a little bit of an overhang. Originally, I was thinking of doing it right at the edge, but I think on the side here, I definitely should have some overhang. So we'll do it that way. All right, all the snaps are in place, so that's good. You can see snaps on uh, that far corner there and underneath the flap are in place. Probably just slap a little bit of silicone around each one of these uh, little snaps on the top there, but it looks good. On the inside, it looks nice and clean as well. So now I'm just gonna put some snaps here for the front door. According to the pattern, the left-sided flap has the large door, so I've got my flap I did a long time ago at the very beginning of the project right there. So we'll just attach the snaps uh, equally placed along this length. Well, exciting times. The front doors, I've got them on right now. Uh, you've got the uh, side walls and wings. All the snaps are installed on both sides now. Now we're rounding the bend, guys. I just have to do this uh, front wall right here. These are the front doors. So there's the larger panel right here and the smaller panel. They're overlapping by about 12 inches. So now I'm just going to put on some snaps so that I can um, hold on the front doors. And then I'm going to be sewing on some webbing that's going to have buckles in the middle. Maybe about four of them or so just to kind of hold the front doors closed. So this is pretty exciting. So I'm going to install those snaps and then we'll go from there. Well, that went really well. I've got all the snaps on the front, which is basically the top part of the canopy. And I want to show you right under here, just to attach the two, you know, pieces together. I have a little snap underneath there hidden. So next step is to put on these, uh, basically just little things to close the front door. So I've got some buckles and some more webbing. I'm using about 13 inches of webbing here, 15 there. This is just the layout. I'm going to take the doors off just to sew this on a little bit more easily, but there you go. I've decided to use three just to make my life easier. I will have to do buckles on the inside as well because obviously when you leave the tent, you're going to buckle it closed this way, but when you're inside, you're going to buckle it closed from the inside. So I'll be setting up this exact same layout on the inside of the tent. This shouldn't take too long. What I have to do is sort of sew this on this part of the buckle, and I'm going to kind of use like an X shape little box with an X in the middle of it to sew the uh, the webbing on. So that'll be cool. So we'll do about six of those. And then after that, we'll just do a few finishing touches. Just want to show you what I was talking about here, just making that kind of a sturdy uh, sewing pattern there, just so that these buckles don't rip out. They're on. So you can see how I did it there. Three of them. So now I'm just going to kind of flip it the other way around, and I want to do the inside one. So the flap you see on the right side will be overlapping the one on the left so this you know the little buckles will go a little bit differently on the inside but they will be in a similar location and just to make all my raw edges look really nice I'm using 
bias tape. So it's a beautiful maroon colored bias tape. So any raw edges, just make sure you cover them up. They look great and it prevents a lot of nasty fraying. I've crudely set it up in my basement. Uh, as you can see, the ridge line and the uh, canopy, obviously, it's too big for here. So I just want to kind of get a general idea of what's going on with it now before I finish up a few things. Uh, a couple of things I'm finishing up here are just some little webbing tabs here. I'm going to put the corners of each part of the tent just so that I can stake it down. Um, so I've got a few of those made up. And also you can see here, uh, this is the fiberglass fabric and I've made sort of the insert for the stove sleeve there. Really easy, sort of 12 inches square. And then I just cut the center hole uh, a little bit larger than my four inch pipe because obviously if there's a big gust of wind, I don't want the uh, pipe to get stuck in the sleeve here and you know yoink the tent away. So made this, uh, it's already made it up because I was doing my experiments in my fishing hut. And you can see here I've got the uh, fuzzy side of the Velcro. So on the front of the tent on the left side of the door, I'm going to measure uh, exactly where my stove goes, cut out a square, maybe line it with a bit of webbing and obviously the opposite side of the Velcro so I can Velcro this on. And then, uh, you know, when I'm not using this, I'm going to make a window out of Noceum fabric and obviously a storm flap as well. So that'll get done in sequence, but uh, this is the uh, that fiberglass fabric from JT Outdoor Fabrics. Uh, it's pretty easy to work with, and it's uh, as you can see here, it does great, even though there's a really hot stovepipe coming through it. Another finishing touch is putting in a few tabs on each of the four corners. This is some webbing with a grommet, so this is on each of the um, side panels of the tent as well as the back two quarters. Final finishing touch, a blue jay on the wing. Well, I've got it all set up in the garage now, a lot better space, and she's done. So you can see here, I've got it all pulled out at the back. Let's take a look at the side wings and walls. So they are looking really good. There's my little blue jay. This is perfect. So in the summer and uh, warmer days, I'll be taking these off, which is so glad I did that. I think that's really good. It takes away a lot of the weight. It looks good. So there's the front of the tent with detachable doors. There is my uh, little wood stove set up just for, for looks. I haven't got the rest of the piping in there, obviously, but I didn't show you how I did that. That is exactly the same way you do the back windows there. Uh, so done some webbing, some Velcro, and the, uh, the um, fabric around the pipe is that very special fiberglass uh, sleeve there. So very good for hot pipe. So I've got two adjustable poles on either side of the tent, on that side and that side. And there's also one in the middle that I'm just finishing up installing because I realize the doors are extremely heavy and you do need a third pole for the front uh, to support it when uh, the doors and the wings are on. Just give you a little close up there. These are actually the Woods adjustable uh, tarp poles. You can get them at Canadian Tire, 14 bucks. So at the top here, there's a very tiny eyelet that the pole goes through. So here's little eyelets. That's where the uh, the pole pins go through. It's a really snug fit. Um, and I'm not too worried about rain at all because I'll have the rain fly on over this anyways. So I just want to give you a little close-up on that. Here's the left side. It is looking good. And here are those little tabs that I installed on all four corners of the tent so that they can be, basically the corners can be kind of pulled out and staked down, you know, when it's windy. There's actually one hidden right in here as well. There you go. Perfect. So right there is another little tab. Let's go inside. So here I am standing at the very, very front in the vestibule here of the tent. There is the sleeping area, which is really nice. And I'll just go back in the sleeping area here and sit down. And I'll show you, that's what the front looks like. So I have no supports on the stove right now. I just popped it in for, just for good looks there. But uh, that's going to generally be the idea. You can see that central pole right there, really important. Doors are extremely heavy. I never really realized how heavy they were. Uh, you could do a line of grommets across the top. Not grommets, sorry, like those little D-rings and, you know, put some, you know, cabling or whatnot and sort of pull it tight. But I think these little poles are going to work just fine. I was really happy to find those at Canadian Tire. So there we go. Next step is just to, you know, waterproof the tent with your favorite canvas tent waterproofer. Make sure it's breathable. 
because um, canvas is a really great fabric. You want to make sure you don't lose the breathability there. And, uh, you know, some people before they do that will actually wet down the tent, let the canvas swell so that uh, it, it gains some of its own, you know, water repellency. But these guys uh, tend to get kind of moldy if you don't dry them out. So be very careful when you're using these tents. Do not put them away wet. Just so it's included, the huge uh, rain fly is right here. This is what the tent would look like in the summertime. You know, if there's no wind and you just want to kind of camp out. So it looked like this. And uh, in a future video, I'm going to show you that we'll be snapping on right here to the two sidewalls, no seam um, bug mesh. So that will really make this tent suitable for spring and summer camping with all those bugs. So uh, also the spot where I put the stove jack in, that also will have a Velcro piece on there with just no seam bug mesh and a storm flap. So that'll be a future video. So right now we're all ready for winter camping. This is an awesome project. And now that it's all done, I've got it packed up and it fits nicely in this smaller hockey bag. So let's get on the trails, guys. Thanks so much for watching this Baker's Tent build. It's been a big project, but lots of fun. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Have a great week as always. Take care.